Hey guys, Kevin here with eTrailer and today I'm going to be showing you how to install the Phoenix Faucets Catalina RV Bathroom Faucet here in our 2010 Forest River Flagstaff Classic Superlight Travel Trailer. So if your faucet is just not working at all or maybe it's just starting to kind of wear out and corrode, then it might be time to upgrade your faucet to the Phoenix Faucets Catalina RV Bathroom Faucet. This faucet has a single lever design that can easily switch over from hot over to cold. It has a nice brushed nickel finish, but it also comes in a rubbed bronze and a chrome as well so that you can match the aesthetics of your trailer. It has a 1.2 gallon per minute water flow and the aerator comes off super easy. This is one of the things that people kind of get into most often. With the aerator screwed off, you can easily clean it out. This is one of the most common things that this gets clogged up and just needs to be kind of rinsed out and fixed. And then all you have to do is just screw it back on. Installation of your RV faucet is honestly going to be super simple. The toughest thing is really just getting your hands in behind the sinks just because RV manufacturers don't really give you a lot of room to work. So here's our neighbor's current faucet. As you can see, it's kind of getting worn out. The finish on it's kind of getting ruined and it's just nothing that you can really clean off. It just kind of happens over time. Buildup kind of gets on there and eats through it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and replace it. To replace that, there are two fittings down below that are just a screw on fitting. So we will have to get under the sink, which pretty tight space, especially in campers just like this, where you really just have this really, really tiny cabinet. But should be su uh, super simple. We're just gonna unscrew those off and we'll be able to pop our old faucet off. So here's the fittings I'm talking about. These just simply screw on. This is typically gonna be what you're gonna find on any kind of faucet like that. Um, with these, they are plastic. You shouldn't have to really use any tools to get them on and off, but they may be a little bit tighter than your hand can handle at first, but you do wanna be real careful. If you use like channel locks or anything like that, it can kind of start to mar up that uh, connection point and then you're not gonna be able to really get it uh, on there properly and you can end up having a leak. But here's that little connection point really it just screws on so we can go ahead and get our cold water inlet out and then we can start unscrewing our faucet. If you look at those two inlets there's these black rings that are around it that are also gonna have that same kind of uh, little tabs on it that you can kind of grip onto and unscrew it so you're just gonna have to take those off with both rings removed we can lift up our faucet and then you can see both those water inlets now the next step is going to be measuring your sinks uh, water inlet holes ours today is spaced four inches apart center to center so we know we need to get a faucet that is four inches center to center or if we have a single inlet faucet where it's got the two hoses coming out we just need to make sure that we can cover both of these holes with the little dash plate that kind of goes over that and lets the single stack faucet sit in place all right now we got our new faucet we've got our components with it there's going to be this plastic gasket that goes with it and you'll notice there's a little ring that kind of goes around it that it's going to be facing up into the faucet itself that way it kind of clips into place and then we can drop it down onto our sink once we kind of get it a little bit where we want uh, you may need to have somebody else just kind of hold it in place because this is going to want to move on you because it's a little bit more top heavy with the end of the faucet there but we're going to go back down there and we're going to replace those rings that we had on there that tighten it down and they also come with another rubber gasket so we'll slip that on first and that's going to kind of press up on there and that's what actually holds this down to the sink so i'm going to get down there and i'm going to screw these back on and then we can hook up our water so i don't have this fully tightened down yet i've got about 99 percent of the way i left enough just so i can kind of move this around so that we can center it exactly where we need it to be and once you find your center, you can go ahead and just fully twist on those little rings and get it nice and tight right in place. All right. And then you can kind of give it a little jiggle up top on the faucet itself, make sure it's nice and secure. All right, now I'm just screwing on my water lines. And we do want to make sure that we get these nice and tight. Otherwise you can end up having a leak. One thing I like to do just to ensure that there's not any kind of leak is put a paper towel or shop towel, something under it that will show if it got wet because it'll dry and kind of 
crinkle up a little bit. So you can stick one of those under your faucet for a day or two and just kind of see if anything leaks out over time. And you can adjust accordingly. Now that we have our water lines hooked up, we can go ahead and turn on our faucet, test it out. And we can also just take a look underneath and make sure that we don't have any drips. Now that our faucet's properly working, we don't have any leaks, that'll do it for our installation of the Phoenix Faucets Catalina RV Bathroom Faucet.